Hi, I'm Seema Anand, and with me, as always, is Dr. Anvita Madan Behel, relational and psychosexual therapist. Anvita, it's good to be back with you again. Thanks, Seema, and it is great to be here. I think we're doing one together after a very long time. A very long time. And today, what I really want to tackle is vaginismus. When it comes to pain during sex, there are, of course, lots of causes, but vaginismus has suddenly become a word that everyone understands. And actually, you know, that is a myth and we need to like think it's not vaginismus is not like the process can be painful because of vaginismus, but vaginismus is actually contraction of the vaginal muscles. And what happens is, and um, if I can show it, like if this is our vagina in many mm. ways, basically what happens is that the muscle gets contracted so nothing can go in you know normally it relaxes and it opens up so something can go in but it's basically the vagina the muscle contracts and then nothing can go in um, and that's what vaginismus basically the vaginal muscles contract um, and you're unable to insert anything or it's very painful when something is inserted and that could be a tampon it could be a penis it could be uh, if you go for an internal exam um, it could be any of those things and of course like you just said it can be for so many different reasons um, and yes it can be an emotional or mental issue but the manifestation is physical and there's very real pain involved Absolutely. So when we think about vaginismus, there can be multiple reasons. But for me, a lot of times when I explain it to my clients, I tend to say your body is doing something that you're emotionally feeling. So you emotionally, you might be feeling, oh, I don't want to have sex or I'm anxious about having sex or I'm anxious about this checkup that's coming up and your body just acts it out. So the reasons could be emotional uh, but the symptoms or the actual what happens is absolutely physical and like we said involving a lot of pain there's still not enough uh, treatment centers there's not enough treatment and there isn't enough information on it yeah because i think most of the time women just turn around and believe that they're unable to have sex or they can't have sex anyway sex education is so limited that they think that there's something wrong with them or many times they believe there's something wrong with them physically which could be one of the reasons there could be physical reasons for vaginismus, which you should go and get medical help for uh, but we have seen that in majority of cases, there are only 10% cases where it is medical. Majority of the cases, it's something emotional that is causing vaginismus. So today, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions which have come in from our listeners. So um, as much as possible, because like I said, there's so much misinformation, lack of information. There's a long way to go before we understand it properly. So um, the first question is vaginismus caused by sexual abuse? It is one of the reasons it could be there, but there are multiple reasons uh, vaginismus might happen. Um, many times it's because of somebody feeling anxious, somebody feeling stressed and um, or having emotional, uh, they could be upset. Um, so there are multiple reasons. So I think the better maybe the, um, the question might be, what causes vaginismus and that might help give a clearer um, answer and many times it it could be because you might have had something traumatic uh, happen to you which could be abuse um, needn't be sexual abuse it could have been emotional abuse physical abuse it could be any kind of trauma uh, that is causing vaginismus many times we've seen the trauma might be caused by actually when you're delivering a baby or got to do with labor so that could be a trauma that could be present or there could be you might have um, relationship discord you know you're not getting along with your partner and things so that's causing you um, emotional stress or anxiety um, or another big reason could be that you're really um, uh, you're really stressed about sex and sexuality and you're getting troubled by that and if that is something that is keeping you anxious it's basically when the anxiety reaches a certain 
level the body just says this is too stressful i'm just going to shut down you know so the vagina basically says this is too stressful i'm just going to shut down and why you are apprehensive about having sex once again could be millions of reasons uh, but that's just that you're anxious about that so um somebody wanted to know what is the difference between primary and secondary vaginismus so um and the third one i would add to it is situational so primary vaginismus is when you have never been able to insert something in your vagina like for all your lifetime um your vaginal muscles have contracted so it could be that you might have noticed when you were 13 you were trying to insert a tampon and the body wasn't cooperating the vagina wasn't and then subsequently when you grew up and you had relationships the same thing happens so in some ways what we know is that your vaginal muscles have never been open you know um so, uh, the second one the secondary one is that you know that it was functioning fine um so that your vagina was actually you could have sex you could insert tampons and you could do other you could go for internal checkups but then something happened um and vaginismus was caused so that is secondary so in some ways when we are treating for it what we understand is that obviously some event took place or something happened or some transition happened that vaginismus was caused so you know that's really important information um and the third one like i said is also situational that there are under cer- certain situations um vaginismus happens but doesn't happen all the time so for example it happens when you're having sex but um you're completely fine going for an internal examination with the gynecologist so that also then gives us information as to under what circumstances um are you feeling anxious and stressed about and i guess that would also define how it would be treated because that will give you more information yeah so it it just gives us information like it could be that you're having sex but you when you go to a guy ni um you suddenly are you know you're so nervous about it so then we know where the stress is coming from where the anxiety is coming from it might have been because something might have happened medically or something that you're anxious about maybe pregnancies or other things and and that's where the stress is coming so it's very telling what is causing the anxiety and i guess that brings us back to that point that you started with that it can be so many different things that actually cause the problem and that it's very much something that begins in the mind and manifests in the body um and it's something that in case of treatment etc it is something that we all need to be aware of for ourselves so that when you go to a doctor when you go for treatment you know what you're asking for Yeah I think sometimes it's not as straightforward so you know it's very easy like me or you know us discussing and saying oh there's something in the relationship um I remember I had one case where some a young woman had come she was in her early 20s and um she said you know I I reached the third date I'm supposed to have intercourse at that point these are the rules and I was like okay whatever but sure uh these are your rules um but she said I have vaginismus and she's like i don't understand why and we we would always have conversations about it and everything and she just couldn't figure out she was healthy she was fine she not had any like relationship issues um when i had taken the history there was no sexual abuse there was no like domestic violence or anything um so it was you know we were just wondering and then as we spoke more what turned out was that when she was in college or high school um the partner she had the boyfriend that she had at that time was very controlling uh, and very emotionally abusive and she felt absolutely stuck she wanted to really get away from him but she didn't find any way out um because you know and so it was only when she was able to transition to college or to work and the separation happened naturally that she left but suddenly we realized that at that point her vagina had basically said i don't want to have sex with this person And because it's the her- idea of that the boyfriend factor coming in again Yeah. yeah and and so but she had never made the connection that at that point she felt so so stuck and so 
like just felt like she could never change this um and that vaginismus had come in at that point um but then she had moved on and life looked normal but she had never really spoken about that relationship to anybody and i think um it's something that we've said before but we'll say it again that the body remembers things that even the mind forgets mm -hmm. and so if your body is telling you something you must listen to it absolutely it's really important and and you know we don't know what as in so that's i think that's part of the trusting relationship where somebody can unfold and remember um another client that i had actually had trauma from the delivery um it was so traumatic for her i think they were like the cuts were bigger the bleeding was a lot but it was just something that was like really really traumatic um and so she was so terrified of being pregnant again because the delivery had been so difficult and um it had been it had traumatized her um so the idea that oh you know and she actually came because she wanted to get pregnant again um uh, but i think it like you're saying for the body it was just like there is no way i'm going through that again and the only way i if i have sex that there's an option of it there's a chance of it so her vagina had completely shut down because the idea that something would come inside and get her to become pregnant and then she had to go through that traumatic event again was just not happening gosh it's just yeah it's amazing what our mind and body will do to us okay somebody says what is the best form of treatment is there a permanent cure and is it possible that vaginismus could just disappear miraculously I, yeah so i actually as it it's an interesting question if it can just disappear miraculously and i would say maybe it can because if suddenly you become less anxious about something or suddenly you know your mind is feeling more relaxed it could disappear um but I, not that often because i think what happens is that we build it up for ourselves we keep building up the anxiety um you know and unfortunately in anything psychosexual what happens is we try it once it's unsuccessful and then we remember it was unsuccessful the last time so when we try it again we're just worried it was unsuccessful the last time so we are then worried again that it won't be successful but that worry actually doesn't help it actually makes things tougher and then it is unsuccessful again so the more it's unsuccessful the more we worry and the more there is anxiety um then openness um so i think the treatment is you need to go for you first need to go and get a medical checkup uh from your gp or a gynae they need to do a basic internal to make sure that there is nothing medical there there could be certain medical reasons um that uh because of which it's really painful when something is inserted and and then the anxiety kicks in so you need to rule out that there is anything medical like we are saying it's only in 10% of cases that there is medical uh and then if it is not medical then you need to seek help from a psychosexual therapist or a counselor or now they always also have physical therapists they are basically pelvic uh floor a physiotherapist uh that help you with exercises and help you um it's the main thing is that one we are working on the psychological and two we work with dilators to help you um start inserting things inside and you need to have a rhythm with it you know so you have to feel relaxed to insert something it's it's like any muscle thing right the contraction and the release it's it's vagina is a muscle um so those are the practical aspects of it so there's the psychological aspect and then there are the practical aspects of how do you use a dilator how do you get yourself to relax how do you do deep breathing um and then you know pelvic floor exercises um so i think a combination of therapy and if needed uh, pelvic floor uh, physiotherapists are really helpful in one of the things i thought worked really well is specific types of music mm. that help you to contract relax contract relax um it's almost like setting a pace it's like a metronome mm. you know like when people play a musical instrument and you have to have the beat just right 
I think that can really help also because music helps to relax you a little bit. The other thing I always find it's, um, it's interesting because when we generally talk to people who say, I've been doing my Kegel exercises, mm. people always learn how to tighten the muscle. They learn how to tone it up. They forget that you have to equally learn how to relax that muscle. And, and so for me, it was very fascinating the first time when I was taught that one of the key things that one of my supervisors taught me is that, you know, the instinct would be to insert something when you're inhaling, because that's, you know, like you're saying, when you're tightening, you feel your body's going in. Um, so that would be the time to insert something because it's like it's all going in. Actually, you have to insert when you exhale, because that's when your muscle is relaxing. Um, so the muscle is contracting when you're inhaling and when you're exhaling, that's when your muscles are relaxing. So you are supposed to try inserting the dilators when you're exhaling, not inhaling. And that I thought was like, like I, till I was taught, uh, instinctively, I wouldn't have, like, it makes sense. It's common sense. Um, but, but nobody I actually thinks of it. Yeah. And I think that that is a top tip, actually, that if you are trying to, even if you don't have vaginismus and you are experiencing pain, especially, um, or pain caused from nervousness during sex, where you just need to relax the vagina a little bit, that is a really good tip to remember that exhale, let the breath out. And at that point, you try and insert. Thank you for that. That's really good. What is the best way to incorporate your partner into your treatment? I thought that was a very good question. Yeah. And, and I think, so one, we should like, uh, one of the things that we missed to say before is um, that like we have always said, um, that sex is not just penetration. So just because you have vaginismus, it doesn't mean that you are not sexually aroused, uh, that you're not sexually interested, or that you ca can't engage in other sexual activities. So um, it all it means is that the penetration is difficult. So I think that's really important because obviously there's a correlation that you might start getting nervous as soon as you're engaging in sex. And that could be a buildup. Uh, but in general, th these things do not get impacted with vaginismus. Um, so to have your partner be part and be like, like be sexual with your partner is completely fine. They could, you could have oral sex, you could have foreplay, um, you could engage in other kinds of sexual activity, and all of that will be fine. Um, and so it is but communication with the partner that you you know, you have vaginismus is really important because what happens is people are always trying to move on to the penetration. And at that point, when you've not spoken about it, uh, it even becomes more painful. And then by chance, if it happens where somebody like, you know, pushes through, that can be really, because you can imagine if something's shut and you push something through, that can be really um, harmful to your skin there as well. Um, so communicating that that's what, that's the reason, because you have to remember that when you don't communicate, a lot of times the partners receive it as they're not interested in me. There's something wrong in our relationship. Um, could be, but for the purposes say that's not the reason. So one, communicate with your partner so that they know. Uh, two, if they know, then they can maybe be gentle. They can massage the vagina a little bit and that can relax the muscles. So massaging it is really helpful. And three, um, if you are trying to use dilators, they could be part of that journey. You know, they could help you insert dilators. Um, you, uh, they could be part of that. And that could be part of like foreplay or something like that. Um, so there are a lot of ways uh, that the partners can be involved with in the journey. I think also um, I read somewhere that if you can get your partner to actually cup the outside of the vulva, with the palm of their hand, it kind of warms that area up mm. and it's a little bit like a cuddle. Yeah. So it's very calming. It's very um, yeah. comforting almost. That sounds interesting. And it's similar to like massaging, especially 
this bottom part because this gets really felt. So if they're just massaging it gently uh, with oils or otherwise or lube, it just, you know, so in some ways it's keeping the arousal going, uh, but also it's just relaxing the muscle. Like think about it, if you have um, muscles that are really stiff after playing or sports or anything else, you go for a massage. It's the same thing, it's a vas vaginal muscle. So you need to help massage it, you need to help relax it. Perfect, thank you. Um, what are a woman's options when vaginismus is impeding her ability to get pregnant most of the time when actually women do land up coming to the therapy rooms are because they want to get pregnant you know in some way like in because we don't give sex maybe that much importance a lot of times um very rarely i think it's the more the younger women that come in saying that they can't have uh, sex and yeah they don't why. come in because of the lack of pleasure do they yeah they never say oh well you know i just can't have sex i'm missing out on that pleasure help me it's for the reasons of getting pregnant yeah so the younger women might come like i'm saying the you know this young woman was like oh i need to have sex like the third date and the dates are not going forward and other things and uh, but most of the time women come in because they are at that point where they want to get pregnant and they don't understand how they will get pregnant if the penis is not penetrating inside their bodies and how will it happen um, so one as in obviously we can treat the vaginismus and then they could have sex like it's something that can be treated um, and then they could get pregnant if that doesn't happen because uh, they we cannot we don't have time to treat the vaginismus and they need to get pregnant uh, then there are lots of other ways uh, you should get help from fertility clinic clinics or the IVF or even your gynecologist and they can come up with different solutions for you um, and depending on the severity of the situation uh, they, they, you know, accordingly give. It could be very simple things that you could do on your own as a partnership, or, you know, they might give you a medical plan uh, for getting pregnant. Uh, but um, there is no, there is no reason that just because you have vaginismus that you can't get pregnant. Excellent. So there is help available yes. for that. But on that same point, let's say that you manage to get pregnant. Is this vaginismus then going to impact the birth, the delivery? Um, one, it doesn't impact simply because the vagina doesn't have a problem taking things out. It's okay letting go. The problem is something coming in and vaginismus is something coming in so that is why it's really important to remember um it's not that there you are hurt inside your vagina or there is pain there it's your muscle has contracted and it's not it's basically has a barrier it's saying you can't enter here right um but it's not saying that you can't leave so leaving is fine so giving birth is actually fine not a problem. Um, okay. it's not a problem but actually something coming in is a problem uh, so th what might be complicated is more like your checkups can you go and get an ultrasound done um, you know will you be okay with that at the time of delivery if they needed to do internal checkups and things like that that could get complicated so it's the process is complicated but the actual birth there isn't an issue that is so interesting I've never thought of it like that, but you're absolutely right. We've said all along that it's vaginismus is about the muscle contracting mm -hmm. in um, response to something that is going on in the mind. Yeah. Something that is either remembered or something that is feared and unknown, but it is not a, it's not a physical blockage. No, it's it's basically like, you know, and I, I think the good way to imagine is just the way when our muscles get injured or something like that. And then, you know, the doctor says the muscle has contracted and, you you know, we just have to release the muscle in some ways. Uh, it's actually, it's just that the muscle, the vaginal muscles have just contracted and they're not letting anything in. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they won't relax to allow something out. Um, and it is just all about getting the vaginal 
for your mind and in in so in some ways the way to think about it is um that the vagina the muscles have contracted but there's something in our brain or our mind that is saying that is sending that message so once we start say changing that thing in our brain which is telling the vagina shut down shut down shut down um then once we work on that and the brain is like oh actually this might be safe you know it's not unsafe any longer to let things in uh that that danger that you were feeling or that anxiety that you were feeling actually i worked through it and it's no longer dangerous so then it sends a message to the vaginal muscle saying actually you can relax the danger has gone or it's not there um and that you know that's how the muscles will relax So I think that I know the answer to the next one but I'm going to ask you anyway. It says can vaginismus be hereditary? Um I I don't as in I don't know in primary causes. I I I'm not 100% and we can come back on but logically I would say no unless there is an intergenerational trauma. You know, I I the only way I can think it's in in a uh, hereditary is that say if a mother has been um anxious about sex and sexuality or something about the vagina and everything and then intergenerationally she has passed on that trauma um so because there was the mother had held the trauma she has passed it on to the child where she is you know like if we've had conversations in the house and if we our parents are constantly saying oh be very careful no sex be scared there'll be this that be that whatever so the messages we've always got is that sex is problematic or bad then in some ways we might have transferred the trauma therefore the anxiety and the child or the young woman could also have vaginismus uh, but i don't think it's a medical condition it's like not a genetic disformity that is getting passed on uh it is the trauma that has been transferred okay that makes a lot of sense so i guess we're not really saying that um it could be passed down in the dna possibly mm-hmm. um it is probably more of something that's in the mind and hence will come from environmental passing down as opposed to dna passing down yeah okay um That's been amazing. I have one last question for you which I also thought was really interesting. It says any tips for having sex for the first time after treatment because I know personally uh, a few people who've recently been for treatment and they feel that things are much better that they're feeling better emotionally and mentally about sex now but I guess it doesn't take a lot for it to come back. Firstly you should take away this idea that there will be a first time. It is a gradual process. We normally work with dilators. The one that you might start with literally might be as thin as a earplug like it's very yeah. thin. Then it is like a little finger and then as it goes bigger and the final one might be as big as thick as a penis. But what we're trying to say is don't jump into it um because we have to slowly um you know we'll do the inhaling and the exhaling we'll insert something that feels safe that doesn't feel too big um then once we are successful with that we'll try that few times once that is successful we'll try something bigger you know so engaging with your partner might look like um you know i put in a dilator that was as small as my little finger maybe you can insert your finger right so then that is what there's step 2 and so gradually more and more like more and more like we were saying when there are positive experiences of okay this didn't hurt oh this didn't hurt this didn't hurt so we gradually build up um so i think the biggest issue will be that if you think that there's a first time because it is going to be a gradual build up and then keep your partner engaged in that journey because it it you know because it's problematic to say oh i have a problem so we're not engaging in sex at all oh and now i'm ready so when they have been part of your journey and they have like like i'm saying they could have inserted a finger they could have given you oral sex they could have been part of it um then it comes more naturally and i think 
it takes away the stress of like most of the times that I've seen patients talk about it is that we've done, you know, the dilators and we've done this and they've tried the finger. And um, so I think when it just naturally happens because you're feeling more aroused, engaged, less stressed, less worried, uh, then it will happen, you know, naturally. Um, but without a build up i think the risk is higher so build it up start small and then go large it's interesting because even when we talk about sex for somebody who doesn't have vaginismus the idea is that if you have the foreplay you have the arousal the vagina expands a little bit in order to accommodate whatever is going to penetrate you yeah. and that makes sex a little bit easier. So I think that's actually, again, another top tip from Anvita, that there is no such thing as the first time after treatment. It's a gradual sort of getting into it with very slow incremental increases of what you put in. And, and it can be exciting, right? Like why make it, how we always say, why make the pudding the penetration with the penis? The fact that you can give oral sex, the fact that you can finger somebody, the fact that, you know, you can, those can all be part of the treatment. And the excitement, and things. And the excitement of knowing that this is happening. Oh, look, yeah. we managed this. Oh, this is so exciting. Now we manage something else. So, yeah, I think that's a really good way to look at it. Don't say... How am I going to have sex the first time after treatment? You do it very, very slowly. And just actually on that point of um, people feeling very nervous, I mean, I've given tips in the past of how far you can get them to penetrate you. And you can control that with, you know, boiling up your fist, putting them on either side of your groin. But you can also get these rings mm. that you can put at the base of the penis or whatever it is that you are using for penetration so that you only permit that much to go in that you are comfortable with. Yeah, and that might give a lot of control to somebody who has vaginismus, right? Because uh, one of the things that we know is that many times uh, women who are suffering with vaginismus might have issues about giving up control or being vulnerable um, or allowing, you know, things that they can't control for. So things like that, having the penis ring or just saying, okay, only the top tip of the penis will come in, not the whole thing, um, all of that gives them some control and helps them feel safe um, about, you know, it reduces the anxiety uh, about it. So those are all things that they can manage with their partners. And with that, I think that's been a particularly helpful podcast. I really think that the information that you've given us today should be really useful to a lot of people out there. Is there anything that you want to leave everybody with, like one thing to think about or to carry forward almost as a as a support system for themselves um, I, I think one of the most important things to think about vaginismus is it's about how friendly are we with our vagina right what's our relationship like most of the times what happens is most women don't look at their vagina are not engaged with their vagina don't really understand what's happening um and so I had one client who did have um, an abusive childhood um, and then she just assumed that, you know, penetration was not happening and tampon wasn't happening. So for the longest time, she believed that she was a lesbian. And then when she was in therapy, she was in trauma therapy. Um, she was like, oh, there's something known as vaginismus. So I might actually be bisexual or heterosexual and... I just assumed because nothing was going in, I must be a lesbian, you know, that must be the thing. So I think we create a lot of like theories around things. Um, but what we really need to do is build a relationship with our vagina, know what is happening, uh, be gentle with it, play with it, massage it. You know, it really needs care. Um, so, and don't be afraid of it. Don't feel like, oh, it's so yucky. I'm not touching there. But actually massaging it, caring for it, uh, giving it warm baths, all of those things. So Looking at it. Looking at it. So what my main thing would be start building a relationship with your vagina. I think that's amazing advice, actually. 
And we cannot say it often enough. And we cannot say it strongly enough that you're absolutely right. Most women do not actually know what the lower part of their anatomy yeah. is like. And I think it's really, really important to get to know it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, if you found it useful and helpful, as always, do comment, like, subscribe. Anvita's contact details will be in the caption below. If you need to get in touch with her for therapy or to book an appointment, please do reach out to her. If you need to send me any questions, I am, as always, on info.seema.anand at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. In the meantime, thank you so much, Anvita, for your help today. Stay safe and we'll see you over here soon.